it comes to turning metal on a lathe, few things are of such paramount importance as work holding. Gavin Gear here for makingwithmetal.com. In this video, I want to talk briefly about work holding devices for an engine lathe, and then I want to talk about my brand new 5C collet chuck, which I'm having a lot of fun with. So, first off, this is what I would consider kind of the essential collection of work holding devices for a general purpose engine lathe. The classic three jaw chuck is, is absolutely a mainstay, it's a staple in the collection. It's got three non-independent jaws that scroll together when you use your chuck key. It's got great clamping force, great capacity, couple of downsides. Not as good concentricity, things are going to have a little bit more run out just due to the nature of how these chucks work, and then a little bit less clamping force because of the number of jaws. Step up to a four jaw independent chuck, you've got a different set of trade-offs. The four independent jaws enable you to hold irregular items and to dial in your concentricity if you're doing something like gunsmithing, dialing in the barrel axis to the axis of the spindle would be a great example of where this chuck is ideal, but it's slow. It has the pro of having more clamping force with four jaws, a little bit better for delicate work, but this is really for precision, kind of one-off custom work. That's where this chuck really shines. Then you've got your faceplate. Faceplate is great, again, for mounting irregular items, kind of like the four jaw chuck, but you can do castings, you can do all sorts of things with these cutouts here, these slots. You can also use this faceplate with a lathe dog to turn between centers on the lathe, which is really important for a lot of different operations. You might offset the tailstock to turn a taper, all sorts of things, another essential. But given the option, I will run collets all day long, and there's many different reasons for that. First off, this chuck is a lot safer to use compared to one of these chucks where you've got these sharp jaws spinning at 2000 RPM right next to you, maybe right next to your file, next to your tooling. These chucks also dial in your concentricity really close. You might get less than a thousandth of an inch of run out, which is several times better than the three jaw chuck that you would compare it to for quick action. The collet also has superior clamping force and is also ideally suited for clamping delicate materials, delicate items that you're machining, like a threaded rod. If you want to take a bolt, insert it, clamp it, and turn the other end, easy to do all day long with a collet system. And there are many different styles of collet chucks and collet accessories. There are collet closers that use a lever and a spindle adapter. There's scroll type chucks that are similar to this model I have here, but require more chuck key rotation. This is a hand wheel type, and I really like the hand wheel type because it's really quick to use, and I can leave my outboard spider attached. I don't have to worry about the draw tube and the lever and all the linkage, any of that. It was really quick to install using my D15 mount on the lathe. All I had to do was get the chuck out of the box. I took the chuck itself off of the backing plate. I installed the pins. I installed the backing plate on the lathe. I aligned the number one pin that I chose with the number one pin hole on the lathe. I took this opportunity to stamp that on the lathe as well. So that I'm mounting it the same way and torquing things down to the same specification each time. I then checked the runout on the backing plate face, and just like the instructions indicate, I took a light facing cut to get this perfectly flat and true the way that I have it mounted on the lathe and the way that I have things torqued down. That got things absolutely running dead straight. I then mounted the chuck to the backing plate and dialed in the concentricity. So what you do here is you use an indicator on the ground portion of the taper in the collet chuck. I used a thousandth indicator first and then a tenth indicator in two successive passes. You slightly loosen these mounting screws so that they have clamping force but not too much. And you then look at your indicator reading as you're spinning the chuck and give light taps on the face of the collet chuck. I used a dead blow hammer and I was able to watch the needle move and dial it in perfectly. So this chuck has a specification of five tenths for total indicator reading, and I got it down to about two tenths 
total indicator reading repeatable with dismounting and mounting the chuck. Absolutely happy with that. Then it was time to use it. Let's go over to the lathe and I'll show you exactly how it works. So I've got the chuck mounted mounts like any other chuck that I've got with a D15 mount. Let's go ahead and insert a collet. Now I've noted that with my PB23-00 upward, my key is gonna be kind of at the top. Pop that in and then start to tighten the chuck. When we get close to the taper, we're gonna take the first item that we wanna chuck up, insert it, and then tighten it. Now when the chuck starts to move, you can just tap your foot brake, give it a tighten. We are ready to turn. Okay. Do whatever it is we want to do. Stop the chuck. Now we'll see just how easy it is to switch over from one item to another. Just loosen it, put something else in that we want to use, and then tighten it. It's just that easy. I am absolutely in heaven. Now I feel like I can really get down to business with my new metal lathe. Want to see more action with this collet chuck? Make sure you subscribe to Gavin Tube because I've got a ton of really cool projects coming up where I'm going to be using this collet chuck to secure my work. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy metalworking.